Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. In order to keep things French, French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am Thanos. <laughs> May we, this does with a smile upon my face. Villainous is back with a brand new theme. This time it's Marvel Villainous Infinite Power. Just like the original Villainous, you'll be taking on the role of an evil antagonist and trying to win by ruining the day of the heroes fighting against you as well as that of your opponents. But of course, this time with characters like Thanos and Taskmaster from the Marvel Universe. This is based off the original Villainous game mechanic, so you can watch a review of the original Villainous right now, as well as the how to play. But if you haven't, the game basically works like this. You will have your own character sheet and deck, and you'll be playing cards in this deck in order to achieve a specific goal unique to your villain. Some villains may want to get specific cards out, others may want to try to get specific tokens in other areas. It really depends on who you're playing as. The cards in your deck will be made of mostly of effects, which are one time, or items and allies, which stay on the board until they're removed in some weird way. There is also a fate deck of cards which players may trigger to mess around with you. They will cover the top part of your board and make it so you can't do as many actions, and you'll need to be able to use your allies to defeat them. There are a few things that separate this game from the original Villainous. First up is that fate deck. Before, every player had their own fate deck, and if you use the fate action on someone, you would draw cards from their deck and they would come out to attack them, so it would have specific characters unique to them. This time, everyone still does have their own fate deck, but rather than keeping them separate and in front of their boards, they shuffle them all together along with a set of common fate cards. And anytime you are going to use fate on someone, you draw from that deck, and it could be something that is particularly bad for a specific character, uh, but you can choose who you want to target once you see what it is. So one of Thanos' villains uh, might come into play against uh, Ultron, for instance. It's kind of up to you, unless there are maybe some specific cards with different effects that might override that. There are also event cards in there now. If an event card comes out, it goes into play face up and it has an effect that will matter to everybody at the table. Often it will make life a little more difficult. If you want to get rid of it, you can play your allies or move them right to that event. And once there's a number of allies with a strength value equal to uh, the number printed on the event, it will be cleared. And if you helped get rid of it, you'll gain a reward. So there might be some incentive for you to try to get rid of it quicker, or you might decide you want to keep it around a little while because it's hurting someone else more than it's hurting you. In addition to that, that's really the biggest change in this one is how the fate deck works. There are a couple other things, like there's a new card type called specialty, and these are cards uh, that go into a new section of your board and give you special powers that last over a longer period of time, and the different villains will use those in different ways. And there are a couple things that we don't see in this one, such as condition cards. Kind of replacing that, I think we have now the plus or minus tokens, so some allies can actually have their strengths raised or lowered as time goes on. So ultimately, again, if you're familiar with Villainous, it's gonna be a lot of that same kind of thing, but uh, there are just enough differences to make it feel unique, and of course, you have an entirely new set of villains to play as. Yeah, speaking of which, why don't we go over them now? We've got, first off, let's go with the guy on the cover, Thanos. Then you've also got Killmonger, Taskmaster, Hela, and Ultron. Now, most of these characters you may recognize because they were, they've were they had their own movie. And in fact, Taskmaster, which many people might not know, is because he's going to star in the Black Widow movie, which may come out eventually. <laughs> Should, probably would have been out by now, but uh, things have happened. But yeah, they all have pretty unique, I mean, every, every character in the game has a unique objective, but I know we found that later characters from the Disney version started to have more interesting goals they had to complete, and I feel like that has been carried through to this one. Uh, there's some really weird ones. Ultron is upgrading himself so he has different specialties and gets stronger as the game goes on. And Thanos is really weird. He has 
infinity gems and other players can get those. And then he has to actually go to their boards and take them from them. <laughs> uh, it's really crazy. In general, there, I think, is a little bit more player interaction, uh, even, like I said, being able to play things sometimes or move them to other people's play areas, whereas before it really was you're strictly just focused on your own thing that was right in front of your face. It does seem they learned a lot from the previous Villainous series and tried to fix some of those changes here. As you said, there's a lot more player interaction. The common fate deck we found was actually surprisingly interesting and made things very different, and especially in a two-player game, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But also those specialties, hopping to different boards. Everyone feels a lot more interesting with going to others' boards and doing different goals. They're not to simply just get it this much power. There's, it seems to be a lot less searching your deck that you need to. I mean, there's still some of that, but it's not as bad as the original core villainous. Yeah, and th those events, I think, are, are really interesting because they do give everyone something that they have a common enemy for. Uh, you know, so there is something you might say, come on, like, can you just play a guy there? Like, this is hurting both of us. And it ma does make you feel more like you're all involved in the same game rather than all just working on your own stuff. And sometimes you want to hit somebody or whatever it is. It's still, again, still mostly you're worried about your own goal. But I think they did enough here to to change that up, to make that feel different. And it's interesting how they decided to do it in regards to the Marvel Universe that, uh, you know, you'll see if someone is playing uh, with a specific villain and someone from a hero from their universe will show up during that game. And if they happen to come out not on that player's turn, they might be really bad for that person. So you still do feel like you have a, a specialized game when you're playing, but I, I think it's it's different enough that I like the way that they execute. I think it fits the theme very well, and that's actually one of the reasons why they had the central deck was because there's no reason why Captain America would not go against Killmonger or something. Mm -hmm. But if someone's playing with him, that's how Black Panther gets added into the mix because he's part of Killmonger's unique deck. In fact, Killmonger needs him to prove he becomes king. So it does still get that theme really well, but the mechanic of the one deck actually turned out to be a significant change for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we want to talk about some of the, the two-player. I think one of the things we found was that because of that increased emphasis on uh, player interaction, we found that at the lower player counts, this one uh, uh, suffered just a little bit. There were some uh, weird little interactions that maybe didn't work quite as well, even just talking about the overall nature of the events. Uh, because we're going back and forth so much, they seem to be a lot worse because they're hitting you much more often. Whereas in a larger game of, say, four players, uh, there's more space for you to breathe before it comes back around to you. Interesting interesting little things, and maybe different groups that have different preferences, but that's that's what we kind of found, I think. Yeah, also some of the cards for the villains themselves. I think the two obvious examples are, first off, Thanos, because... Whether he draws his own card or from his personal uh, fate deck, uh, Infinity Stones spawn, and usually people can choose another player. But this time, because if there's only two players, it's just the other person. Taskmaster has one where he can have someone play an ally and gain power from that for free. And that doesn't work as well. It's not as fun if there's only just the same person you have to keep choosing. So it, it hurts a little bit because it can't play as well in the lower count, but... At higher counts, that play interaction is a lot more fun because it's not just like the original Villainous when everyone's sort of playing their own solo game. Yeah, and I think even with the original, this is one that you're more than likely going to want a group of uh, three or four players because it, it has that kind of vibe that a group, a wider group, a mainstream audience can enjoy. Crits and misses for Marvel Villainous Infinite Power. Crits. There's a whole new set of villains to play as here, and they include a new, varied, and interesting set of objectives. They are all fun and weird in their own right, making it so you want to swap characters with each game. There's a heavier emphasis on player interaction here, with new elements such as the common fate deck and certain villains' abilities that will allow them to interact differently with other people's boards. In previous Villainous, most of the cards sort of only focused on your own area, meaning you were just playing your own little solo game and seeing who can race to their end first. This allows for a lot more player interaction, which we found was a bit more enjoyable and kept people engaged at the table. 
While the characters in the game have origins in the comics and now the movies, they didn't just go for pre-existing art. They have all original artwork on the cards. It has a unique flair to it that really pops the same way the original game did. Just like all the previous villain games, they're trying to make sure this doesn't look like a cheap money grab. It looks nice, plays nice, and you'll be happy to have it in your collection. Misses. The player interaction is fantastic, but it comes at the expense of the two-player gameplay. Some of the actions don't feel as well or doesn't work when there's only one other opponent on the table. And for some people who are used to only playing with two players, maybe that will be a bit of a disappointment. There are at least a couple of character abilities that seem like they were designed with a larger group in mind. In order to keep things fresh, they did add some more complicated rules and interactions, and that can lead to some questions on how certain things will work out depending on who draws them and if certain cards are out. It's not the worst thing in the world, just be prepared to maybe have to look some stuff up online. For a game with a very approachable theme and a generally easy to learn rule set, it is a little bit disappointing when you have to spend some time looking up these specific little interactions. While I've watched a lot of Disney movies as a kid, and I know you're a big fan too, Jonathan, I'm not as big, so I do connect a little bit more with Marvel, and that's probably a bit of the bias, but I also feel like this stepped up the game in terms of interactions. Like we said, it's a bit more complicated, and sometimes we're like, well, how does this card work with this and or this situation? But I enjoyed that overall, because that means there's actually a little bit more thinking and like having to deal with things. It's not simply just like playing solitaire all at the table at the same time. I am glad that they didn't take this and say, this is like a new base set, so we're going to go back to basics. And uh, even if it wasn't just a reskin of the originals, which is definitely not at all, uh, that they didn't say, let's you know simplify it because in case people are coming into this as their first villainous scheme, it does feel like another progression from, uh, from the expansions for the original Disney villainous. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I think it's, it's a little bit more interesting. There's more strategic depth there. Uh, it's interesting this one is called infinite power has a subtitle to it and i i was my guess as to why that is uh, as opposed to the original which was just called disney villainous is that they realized that because those expansions they come out with can be standalone they didn't want you to feel like you had to buy one first and maybe they're trying to say in the future we're going to have new sets that will be uh you know you can just pick that up if you just like this villain and want to play with those but actually i don't know i don't know if that would work maybe because you need power tokens and stuff but no because they still come with stuff like that in the other ones you can you can buy the three-piece versions by the way the rule book on the back Shows Loki, so we can probably <laughs> guess who's in the next Marvel expansion. Yeah, that was another thing. I, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed the characters in this one. I think they have some cool picks, but just like with the Disney one, they're definitely leaving a couple of those big ones out, so you got to buy the next set. <laughs> but For me, okay. what I'm curious about is, and I know, like, the movies play heavily into this. I mean, as far as I know, that's why Taskmaster's in there. He's not the first pick I have. I don't even think he's a big boss in Legendary, which has gone through the entire he's Marvel series a, and then some. A C or D list, I think, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, is that Spider-Man villains? Are we going to see any of them? Mm, yeah, right, right. How, what, how exactly is that going to work? It's always a weird thing with Marvel. Are you going to see X-Men in there? Are mm -hmm. you like, you know, what, what are they going to do for that? But I'm excited to see how it works, and we have not attempted to combine and play between Disney and Marvel. I've but. thought about it. Of course, we didn't do it because we're focusing just on this base game alone. I think you could, but like the said mentioned, Legendary, it might be like combining Legendary encounters and Legendary where there's some rule tweaks you're going to have to come up and decide on your own how they interact. It's not impossible, but you also probably need to, um, if you're going to share the common deck, you'll need to cover up the top. Otherwise, you know. Oh, that's a Maleficent card on top. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really the one thing. Maybe you could make it so. Uh, oh, you just get a piece of cardboard on top or something. It's not the it's not the hardest thing in the yeah. world. It's just that you have to understand there's going to be some legwork on your part. It wasn't right. designed in mind to be combined. <laughs> or maybe you go the other way and everybody you go back to everyone having a unique deck. Yeah, I don't know. You you, you guys can figure that out. <laughs> and we'll, we will speak. Even if you do do that, we don't know how balanced they are for that. I mean, it could oh, no, turn yeah. out that you know, like Thanos can just ruin every everyone's day because no one can interact with him or something or Maleficent is great in this version. Maybe she's meant to be the Marvel's greatest villain. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, okay. We'll, we'll find out someday in the future. But I think this is a cool start for for a new branch of this line. And uh, we were saying I'd be totally cool with a Star Wars villainous. I'd be I'd be ready for that. I think that could be exciting. And I don't feel super fatigued by by this. I think they are putting them out at a healthy pace. So if you like the original villainous, or if you weren't sure about it because you're not a big Disney fan, but you are a big Marvel fan. This might be a good one to look into uh, or one to gift to someone in your life who likes Marvel. Let us know in the comments what you think about this one and the new additions. And also tell us who is your favorite villain included and who should be added to future sets. Because there's no shortage. I mean, even compared to Disney, there's way more villains you could talk about that they might want to put into this scheme. And clearly they're not sticking to just strictly the top tier. It could be obscure That's actually ones. what I like to leave. I want to hear your best non-top tier villain who should be playable. Yeah. So no no Dr. Octopus, no Green Goblins. The Wall, isn't that? Yes, <laughs> that's who we want. <laughs> we want The Wall. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. My name is Jonathan. I'm Will. And this has been a Roll for Crit review. Never miss out by liking and subscribing. And you can also check out more on our Patreon. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Twitch, so follow us there.